it's, there's no denying that uh, artificial intelligence as we know it today has completely changed the nature of the game when it comes to cyber securities, whether it's the opportunities or the pitfalls, because the nature of cyber attacks is getting more sophisticated, but your ability to defend is also improving with AI. So Swapna, to answer all of these questions, I'm gonna uh, you know, welcome you again. Thank and if you. you could start by you know, laying the context for, you, uh, for the audience. Uh, how has the landscape of cyber security evolved uh, you know, with the advent of artificial intelligence, because that's been in play for several years, but what's changed in the last couple of years is how easy it has become for everyone to use. What kind of new challenges does that pose? Thanks, Ritu. And first of all, uh, good morning to everyone. It's still morning, right? We're before 12. <laughs> so lovely to see such a big and engaged audience. And yes, every time technology evolves. So for example, when cloud came or when cellular networks started, Cybersecurity is always something that has to keep pace. And when you look at the landscape today, especially with the use of AI, cybersecurity has to be studied from the two sides, right? There are two sides. Um, so let's look at the adversarial side first. Understand your enemy, as they say, right? Keep your enemies close. So from the adversarial side, three things really come out um, at a very high level, right, obviously. One is the sophistication of attacks. And uh, I want to give you an example. Phishing. Phishing today still 85% of breaches are caused by human error. And that human error ranges from doing some activity wrong while they're running an environment to literally clicking on a wrong link. Now, previously, these phishing emails were very obviously wrong. So someone who's aware knew there was a grammatical error, there was punctuation mistakes, but thanks to very sophisticated LLMs, these phishing emails are seemingly very, very good. Even the domain name are very, very genuine. So we did an experiment within our company. Our InfoSec team used an LLM and created a phishing email. The hit rate was up by 25%. Goodness. And so, it's, it's easier now to create more sophisticated attacks. Sure. Second is the scale of the attacks. So what I can do is actually train a model to create malware. And every time I find that this malware can be blocked, I find a better malware to create from the same model. Yeah. So remember, models, we have foundational models. It's become ubiquitous, as you said. You take the foundational model, train it, it's much more easier. You don't have to have a master's in computer science or a PhD. You just need to know English or perhaps whatever new language is going to be. Exactly. And you need to know where to go to, right? So the scale of attacks are going to be massive. You just have to be prepared. And third, very importantly, is the attack surface. You saw the previous session, they were talking about uh, access to data. So now think about it. There are non-developers. Usually in companies, there's a development team. They are, they've been using AI for the last 10 odd years. So it's not new. Now, with all due respect, anyone in the company from marketing to HR to finance can be using AI. It's that, it's become so much easier. So that entire attack surface of who's using AI, what data they have access to, is now helping our attackers get a much broader space to go after, right? You know, Swapna, before we go on, I have to ask you, have you been a victim recently of any sort of cyber security attacks? Have you clicked on any of these links sent to you by someone? No, 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 no. <laughs> Very clear. <laughs> oh, you're not telling us yet. Uh, you know, but uh, how would you chart out some of the milestones uh, in how cyber security itself has evolved? Uh, you spoke about how technology has existed for all of these years, but in the last two years itself, we've seen significant leaps in how everyone's able to use it. So, you know, could you outline for us what some of the milestones have been before we get to some of the opportunities that presents? Sure. So the, the defense side of the, of the landscape, but that's where the milestones make a lot of sense, right? So AI has been used for a while now. I mean, I will take our, our own evolution at Palo Alto Networks, where uh, there are technologies such as image recognition, right? when you want to prevent sensitive data from being shared. Let's take an example of driver's license. 
The driver's license in Karnataka is different from the driver's license in Maharashtra. So you need to have the ability to recognize the image. You need to have the ability to extract text from the image and prevent this data from being leaked. We are using AI in doing that, right? So consider it one of the, one of the quite few years old things that have been used, uh, where we have been using AI. Second example I would give is fingerprinting or behavioral analytics. So now with the in cloud, one of the big things that you really have to be worried about is identity breach, right? So can you fingerprint how a user typically uses his or her access to the cloud, right? So identity breaches are one way of using AI again. So understanding whether an identity has been breached, right, using fingerprinting. Another very interesting use of AI that has been there uh, is device fingerprinting. And I want to give you an example, which is, which is if, just two days back, someone in my team was telling me we were doing uh, some work with a, with a cement manufacturer, right? Cement manufacturer, we have plenty, um, and I, I won't mention the country uh, purposely. And the cement manufacturer, after uh, using an IoT solution of ours, figured out that they had medical equipment in their environment, in their IT environment. Now, first of all, AI is used to fingerprint that this is medical equipment. And why is a cement manufacturer having medical equipment sending data to 2,000 external IP addresses, right? So fingerprinting is one very good use of AI that has been done for a while. And uh, third is dealing with big data, right? So the extent at which, for example, let's take SOC. Everyone, anyone here who works in the SOC, the security operation center, okay. So that gentleman, sir, you will understand the pain of dealing with millions of events every day. Mm. Then having probably 30, 35 vendors in your environment, mm. having all their logs coming into your seam. So analyzing this amount of data and being able to intelligently come out with recommendations, mm. reducing your mean time to respond, mm. reducing your mean time to detect to minutes, Seconds for detection, minutes for response. AI is being used there. So really cybersecurity has been using AI very effectively to keep um, folks safe. Hmm. Uh, you know, how do you assess, because we've seen instances of um, cybersecurity attacks, uh, whether it is government agencies here, whether it's private agencies, uh, you know, how, how swiftly do you assess uh, India's uh, being able to respond, uh, you know, if you look at some of the recent instances, how do you assess that, say, versus uh, what you're seeing globally? You mentioned that cement manufacturer. I don't know how long it took to solve that issue. No, so the issue was observed within minutes. Hmm. Uh, obviously, to find that device, even sometimes the physical location. But see, yeah. this is nothing to do with India. Hmm. Unfortunately, as companies grow and evolve, people move in and out. Hmm. There are servers in the cloud, there are databases in the cloud, there are IT devices in the data center that people tend to over time lose track of. But rather so, the time of det detection and then solution, how has that come down over the years? Oh, that has come down significantly. Mm. And without mentioning customers, I'll give our own example, mm. Palo Alto SOC. We were dealing with millions of events uh, per hour mm. because people love to attack us, right? It's a cybersecurity company. Having attacked Palo Alto is a good thing. Mm. <laughs> so we were able to bring down our mean time to detect mm. to 10 seconds. Right. So detecting a breach came down to 10 seconds. Mean time to respond came down to a minute, mm. right? Because we honestly, uh, we, we are very, very strict about precision mm. when it comes to using AI. Mm. In the world of cybersecurity, uh, we get used in hospitals. We get used, and I gave you the IoT example. Think about a hospital where a uh, heart monitor is connected to a patient, and the cybersecurity vendor's product says that this monitor has been breached. You need to isolate it. Hmm. If you're not precise, you might be causing a lot of damage. Well, so getting the mean time to detect and respond yeah. 
but not at the cost of precision. So precision AI is extremely important as cybersecurity vendors develop their products. So, you know, like precision AI is something that you brought up, but uh, what are some of the technologies that, are you, that you're using to counter these more sophisticated attacks and, you know, what sort of opportunities that artificial intelligence present, uh, you know, to uh, you know, be able to counter these uh, phishing attacks and so on and so forth um, in, in the last couple of years that you've seen emerge? So I gave you a number of examples when it came to the milestones of how cybersecurity vendors have been using AI. Hmm. Obviously, I took our journey in Palo Alto, but there are other vendors out there where this technology has been used. Now, the opportunity of using AI is, um, especially when I'll talk about neural networks, like deep learning uh, AI models, the opportunity is going to be, for example, in how users interact with cybersecurity products. Uh, the gentleman again there, my friend from the SOC, <laughs> he will know when you're dealing with 30, 35 vendors, you have to understand each product differently. You have to go and make changes across. There is a whole element of knowledge base that has to be developed in the company. These deep models are going to create an opportunity for these cybersecurity vendors to make interacting with products very easy. That's going to be a key differentiator for cybersecurity companies. Now, how they develop this, we can talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, um, so you know, for our friend here and for some of the others that may be around, uh, you know, we will get to a question in a bit. But, you know, how should companies and uh, chief information security officer, uh, officer CISOs respond to these emerging challenges? If you could quickly list out, you know, three or four top things to keep in mind. Absolutely. And having um, an AI policy, I would say, is the first thing. Hmm. You remember the day when cloud was something people didn't want to use? Right? And uh, I know the gentleman, Sridhar, said that they will be deploying all their AMD devices on-prem. But there's a lot that's happening to the, in the cloud, the AG of SaaS applications that are being in, used in the cloud, right? So having, just like you have a cloud policy, you should have an AI policy as a CISO. And why that's important is, uh, I would say, for two reasons. One is the fact that the ubiquitous nature of AI today. There are multiple teams now who are going to be using AI. It's not only that sequester develop it, development team that's going to be using AI. So you need to understand and you need to perhaps create a workflow and approval process for them to be able to use not just download foundational models and start working with them, but really an approval process of how they can use, what data they can use for that Right? So that's one thing as part of the AI policy. And uh, the second is, today, when you use applications in your environment, uh, we still see, unfortunately, there are a lot of enterprises who don't know the SaaS applications they're using. That's number one. Now, let's assume you figure out all the SaaS applications. When you turn on the AI functionality in those SaaS applications, do you really know what data they're touching? Are they touching sensitive data? Are they touching biometric data of your employees which you have stored? Uh, without naming any vendor, let's say you use a communication app. There's a recent uh, AI-enabled communication app which really nicely brings out all your meeting minutes once your meeting is done. It's lovely. Yeah. I would love to use it. But I'd really want to understand where, which data or which model this is, is using. It accessing? Yes. Yeah. So, and that kind of knowledge CISO should have to understand future implications externally and internally. Hmm. You know, what about larger enterprises and companies themselves? Uh, you're talking about specific individuals and what they must keep in mind. But are there strategies you could outline for enterprises to be aware of these uh, new kind of threats that are emerging and, you know, how they could counter it? So, I'll focus again, I'll try to answer your question from a cybersecurity perspective, right? Uh, we do a lot of black hatting in Palo Alto. And I'm calling it black hatting because we always have to stay ahead of adversaries. So we have, we, we build malware, we try to break that malware, we test it on our products and we are constantly building those antidotes, or medicine if you will, to fix and prevent that in malware from getting attack. in. Yeah, detect, exactly. So 
all cybersecurity security companies have to really up their game on black hatting because with generative AI, there are more people who are going to be perpetrating attacks. Hmm. Now, for enterprises who choose cybersecurity vendors, have to make decisions on building that layered security model in their environment, they really need to choose companies which have three very important things. One is the right data and historically the right data. So these models to become more precise and to get to the point of precision AI really need volumes of good quality data. So is your vendor having that? Have they been enough around to have that kind of data, right? Number one. Number two, does the vendor have a good uh, cataloging of the data lineage? Do they know how that data is coming? Do they have the ability to bring varied data together. The previous speaker also mentioned about how silos need to be removed, right? A variety of data has to be brought in to really get the most out of the data. So that's something enterprises should do. Now this applies to both cybersecurity or not, right? And third is, it's very important point that you bring in AI experts, which we have been doing in Palo Alto as a best practice and has really given us good results. We bring the vertical experts, so in our case, the cybersecurity experts, who might not necessarily be AI experts, to work with the AI experts. So any industry, and I've, in my uh, previous roles where I've worked with uh, data analytics, people who are good data scientists might not understand how a bank transaction works. So an expert from the bank married to uh, the expert who's a data scientist together would give you the best results. So these three things, I think whether you're a cybersecurity company or any other enterprise to use AI and to get it to its maximum impact, these three things should be done. Well, Swapna, thanks for sharing the tricks of the trade and the secrets, if you will. But then, you know, in that case, that brings me to the next question. How do you stand out as, you know, as a leader in the cybersecurity space? How do you differentiate one company from another? Uh, you know, how would you uh, respond to that? For instance, uh, uh, what can one company do to stay ahead? Um, that's something we were talking about earlier uh, outside. Uh, you know, for some of the players here, what would your advice be? For cybersecurity players, right? Yes. So, so if they implement all of that you were saying, now what distinguishes one from the next? See, what's really going to be distinguishing in cybersecurity is obviously your effectiveness of security. That's going to be number one. Hmm. And the effectiveness is really governed by the data you have. So models, machine learning has been used hmm. and machine learning will get easier, will get more ubiquitous you need to have access to the right holistic data. When I say holistic, across disciplines, mm. right? So you can really analyze it together and make sense out of it better. So that's going to be one. You should be able to uh, track the data lineage. We spoke about that earlier. But now think about the way LLMs are helping interact with um, the digital way of life much easier. Mm. So. Cybersecurity vendors are really going to differentiate themselves when yeah. they make using their products easier. Okay, uh, you know, we're running out of time. So a final question to you on, you know, what are some of the future technologies uh, that will shape how cybersecurity evolves? See, AI is, uh, has been used in cybersecurity for some time, hmm. right? What's really going to change how cybersecurity uh, I would say how people interact with cybersecurity mm. is how easy you make these products to use, right? That's really going to be the bottom line because if these products are able to use AI to monitor your landscape, to give you the awareness of what you have in your environment, to allow you to interact with it in such a way that if something bad is happening, first of all, prevent anything bad from happening. And if something bad is happening, help you solve it in a very easy way. Really give you the exact steps hmm. to the solution. Hmm. And the only way you can do this, if you remove silos between uh, data producing elements and get a platform approach. Hmm. All right, a platform approach then. Uh, on that note, uh, thanks very much, uh, Swapna, for sharing your thoughts here. And thank you all for your time and for being a wonderful audience. Thank you. Thanks, Ritu. Thank you very much.